Good day, viewers. This is Healing the Hurting, Fulfilling God's Purpose, Glorifying God. Today is a beautiful day, a day of glory, a day of glory. And I'm praying that the glory of God will rise upon your life. The scripture says in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. In verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. For the, close to the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. In the name of Jesus, I pray that in this new season, it will be a season of glory in your life. I pray the light of God, the light of his countenance, the light of his word, the light of Jesus, the light of the world himself will shine upon your life in the name of Jesus. And I pray you begin to fulfill the purpose for which he revealed himself to you and the purpose for which you live in the name of Jesus. Now today, please open up your heart to receive all that God has in stock for you. God has a lot for you. And I'm praying that he will touch you with, a, with his word that will be like a fire, a flame of fire in your heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you once again for being part of the program. Now, please, like I used to say, kindly call your friends and everyone you can and encourage them to join to watch this program by all the various avenues and means that we have to watch the program. The Lord bless you and reward you as you do so in Jesus' name. We'll be praying shortly. After the prayer, we'll go on a short break and then we'll, our guest will read the passage and the guest will take over from there. And we continue on our series that we started last week on tapping into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We looked at an aspect of it last week and which will be, today will be a concluding part of that aspect of it and that is much is expected of you. If we tap, we tap into the fullness, then much is expected. Or if we need to tap, then much is expected. So today, get ready as we begin to tap in Jesus' name. Shall we just pray? Please but kindly bow your heads as we pray together. Lord in heaven, we want to thank you for our viewers. We thank you for everyone who has found the time to watch this program today. We pray that God, your healing power and your glory will rest upon everyone in the name of Jesus. The grace to not to disappoint you, let it come upon us in the name of Jesus. The grace to tap into the fullness of the, of the Holy Spirit, grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Bless us from your word. Let there be healing of the hurting and deliverance for everyone watching. Let there be testimonies and miracles, instant miracles today. And take all the praises. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. We'll go on a short break. When we return, our guest will take over from there. Welcome back. This is Healing the Hurting, Fulfilling God's Purpose, Glorifying God. Today, we are looking at the topic, tapping into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And we looked at an aspect last week, which is much is expected of you. Today, we are continuing on much is expected of you, but under the series of tapping into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We have in the house a wonderful friend, beloved brother, and a wonderful man of God, um, that's the person of Pastor Shita, uh, Evangelist Shita, popularly called Evangelist Shita, is the president of uh, Kingdom Power Ministries International, placed, based in the UK, and also they have their branch in Nigeria. Um, Pastor, you are so much welcome. Thank you very much, Pastor Fonsho. Thank Glad you for to be finding honest, the friend. time to come and bless us. Always my pleasure, my pleasure, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I believe the viewers were really blessed last week. Amen. Now, today we are continuing from where we stopped. You know, we read last week as we are starting Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. So you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon thee. And then you took us to read from which I'm going to read now. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Okay? It says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. This is a very deep, 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 deep passage. Mm. And that already set the stage that a lot is expected of us. Mm. Jesus was baptized with the same power. Yeah. He received the same power 
Absolutely. And then he began to do great things. Mm -hmm. So over to you. I don't know how God will use us to go into mm -hmm. dimension today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for this platform again. And um, thank you for tuning in, all our viewers from different parts of the world. Uh, thank you, Pastor Funcho, for this privilege again. Um, if you recall last week, we dealt with uh, the fact that um, Cornelius was not filled with the Holy Spirit and amazing uh, manifestations through his life, character, devotion, giving, um, mobilizing his own household. In fact, he was doing money devotion with his household before he even got filled with the Holy Spirit which today you see a lot of uh, preachers mobile, trying to convince believers to develop attitude of money devotion, family devotion. You know, Cornelius was practicing all this even before he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. How much more when the Holy Ghost came on him? I'm, I'm trying to Id uh, identify or lay hands on any material that talks about post-Holy Spirit life of Cornelius the life of Cornelius after the Holy Spirit, it will be on fire, I, I think so. Because if this man had this level of commitment and devotion to God before Holy Spirit came, <laughs> then after Holy Spirit came, it will be something else. And I look at my own personal life. I told you how I got converted and came to Christianity uh, many years ago. And um, after the Holy Ghost now came on me, boy, I have not recovered, uh, 32 years going now, I have not recovered. This Holy Spirit is the best gift God gave to the church. Mm -hmm. Is the most precious, valuable, amazing gift that the church has. Hallelujah. No wonder Jesus was saying, huh, guys, it is expedient that I go. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. If I don't go, two of us can't be here, the whole world will explode if two of us are here. One has to be here. <laughs> he, you know, he said he needs to come. And when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. I'll be, I'll be talking on that maybe next week when we go into benefits of the, of the Holy Spirit. But then, much is expected as we want to uh, say more on, on this issue. In John chapter number 12, I'll read verse 20 to 24. In John chapter 12, there's mm -hmm. something interesting that I want us to look at there. This was a situation where the Greeks, certain Greeks came to worship in Jerusalem. And when they came for their worship event, uh, it was probably a minister's conference or a revival conference or probably they came for a uh, Holy Ghost service. You know, they came from afar. Mm -hmm. And in verse 20 of John chapter 12, I read, it says, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. Hmm. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida hmm. of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Sir, we want to see Jesus. We've had so much about this Jesus. We've had so much about his character. We've had so much about his exploits, his power his manifestation, his glory, mm. his kindness, mm. his healing power, mm. his ability, mm. his nature, his love. Mm. Sir, we want to see Jesus, says this Greek contingent who came to attend the conference. Then Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. Mm. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Mm. Now, before I go further, these guys came and they've been looking around and saying, who is the Jesus? Who is the Jesus? Someone pointed them, go into the midst of those group of people there, you'll find the Jesus. They came there, they could identify who Jesus was. First of all, Jesus blended with his disciples. He wasn't wearing a special cross on the neck. He wasn't putting on a special turban. Mm. He wasn't wearing any special suit, gold-plated suit. Mm. A gold plated wristwatch to identify him as Jesus. Mm. Simplicity at its best. Simplicity at its best. So, first of all, they couldn't identify who Jesus was by his dressing. They couldn't identify him by glamour, by parade or motorcade or vehicles. No. Mm. Simple. Blended with his disciples. A big lesson for us to learn. And then 
they came to Philip, incidentally, sir, we would see Jesus. That's the same way the entire world is asking. We want to see the nature of Jesus in you. We, we, we would see Jesus. The world is hungry. They want to see his character. You know, they are telling us, they are telling us that um, it's a lie. All you Christians, you are the same. Hmm. All of you are the same. I was babbing. Um, I was meant to bab in a particular uh, place in Ikeja. I think it was two years ago. And um, one of my sons in the Lord who went there to bab his FS, I was to come and meet him. They got talking with the people in the Babin Salon and they were discussing about the anomalies in the church, how this pastor did this, how this Christian brother, this worker in church did messy things. So this young man said, ah, I understand, but not all everybody's the same. Old. Not all. They started castigating down men of God, casting down men of God. So he got angry in the spirit. He said, Well, I have a pastor, he's coming now to bab his hair. I can vouch that. He loves God and all. They said, forget it. Well, they are all the same. You can't find any one of them. They've all soiled their hands and all that. So I walked in there. The guys saw me and all that and all that. But then I went back home and I got myself thinking that if people can argue and escalate argument to this level, it means we have a problem generally. The Greeks here say, sir, we have heard so much about Jesus. That's another way of interpreting it. We want to see Jesus. Philip and Andrew could not produce Jesus to them, whether in character, in exploit. Maybe those guys were even sick and they wanted healing. Philip and Andrew couldn't perform the healing. Maybe those guys had issues with counseling. They wanted right counseling. They've been told that holiness is not possible and they are hoping to see Philip and Andrew solve it for them. They couldn't. They say, even we are, I say we are struggling. <laughs> Probably that's what Philip and Andrew said. Finally, they couldn't see Jesus in them. They couldn't see Jesus in them. <laughs> Finally, hmm. they came to Jesus hmm. and hear what Jesus says. The first hmm. word that came out of Jesus' mouth looks like it doesn't correlate hmm. with their question. Hear the first word. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Hmm. Did you see that? The hour has come that the Son of Man will be Sir, they say they want to see you. are saying the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. So I did my research. And I found out that the next place he used this word that the Son of Man must be glorified so that the Holy Spirit can be released. John 7, 37 to 39. He said the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus had not been glorified. glorified yeah. So in other words, when he said the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified, he's saying that the hour has come for the Holy Ghost to be given. To be released. That's what he's saying indirectly. Yeah. So what he's saying to Peter, I mean, so Andrew, uh, Philip, and the rest of the disciples, is saying that, listen, you guys need the Holy Spirit. So these errors will not continue. They can begin to see Jesus in you. So that, thank you, sir. So they can begin to see Jesus in all of us. You don't have to be bringing them to me physically. You could have stood in for me. You could have been my ambassador. Once they see you, they have seen Christ. They see character. They see the fruit of the Spirit. They see the gift of the Spirit. They see the manifestation of God Kapoorea, in like you. Sick, yeah. That was what he told them. So he now said, except yeah. a corner of wheat falls into the ground and dies. dies. It remains alone. But when he dies, he will bring forth many of his kind. It was also a coded language. He's saying that I have remained the only one bearing this fruit. He said, now I have to die so that I can produce many more of you. Hmm. So that you can be like me. That was what Jesus said here. What is the point here? To whom much is given, much is expected. Now the Holy Spirit has been given, right? We have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We ought to showcase Jesus to the world. Mm -hmm. We ought to showcase Jesus to everyone around us. And that brings me to the conclusion to talk about uh, the man called uh, the, the Ethiopian eunuch. Mm -hmm. We talked about Cornelius last week. Ethiopian eunuch was a treasurer. In Jerusalem, sorry, in uh, Ethiopia, he was a finance minister. He was in charge of the treasury, but he took permission to travel to Jerusalem to go and worship, mm. to go and worship. Look at his hunger level, his passion for devotion to God, to go and worship. He is a signatory to the accounts of Ethiopia. He shouldn't go for more than one week. The, the nation will be in standstill, but he took permission to go and worship. He said, I have to go and worship. And he traveled three weeks by road, if no more, to worship. And then three weeks back on his way, 
on his way, the man was still reading the scrolls of Isaiah <laughs> in the chariot. After the three weeks of stay, after, staying in God's presence, after staying in God's he presence, was not tired of reading the he Bible. was still reading the book of Isaiah. Then the Lord said, this man is too good to be lost. To be lost. People, they don't have the Holy Spirit and look at their hunger and passion and devotion to God. Hunger for God. Hunger for God. He spoke to Philip. He said, Philip, you know what? I know the desert is dangerous. The desert can be very uh, treacherous and bad, but you have to go. Run, catch up with this chariot, explain to that man, lead him to Christ. And Philip went and explained to him. It was then the man got the, uh, the Holy Spirit. I mean, he, he received Christ, got the baptism, and all that. Imagine his life after that. And today, we are struggling to encourage believers to be passionate about God. That man traveled. Come for this service, it's too far. We have a conference in Redemption, it's too far. We have a meeting in church, it's too far. Oh, come for convention. Come for convention. Where will I sleep? Where will I sleep? It's too far. I have a feeling this man slept in his the chariot. Hold, the hold up is too much. The hold up is too much. It, it looks like our generation, we have been spoon fed to the point that we, we, we have uh, become spoiled, spoiled children. We want everything on the comfort of our phones, our devices. In fact, people want uh, preachers to come to their house and conduct service. It's getting to that. Already is like that. Now. It already is like that. You conduct service on the TV. And then some will even invite preachers and say, can you come and conduct service for my family? Special, you know, special, special, special one for, for my family. Here was an Ethiopian eunuch. Not filled with the Holy Spirit. Had no idea about who Jesus was. But he left Ethiopia and traveled all the way to Jerusalem to worship. I thought he was going to sign a business deal. I thought he was going to bring foreign investors from Jerusalem to Ethiopia to come and invest in the gold, come and invest in infrastructure. He came to worship. He came to worship. He finished worshiping, got on the chariot, and he's going back another three weeks journey by road. To seek the living God. To seek the living God. Brethren, we have the Holy Spirit. Much has been given to us. The Holy Ghost is the best gift that ever happened to the church. And in the coming days, we'll be listening to some of the benefits the Holy Ghost has got to offer to us. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, as we were speaking, quite a number of things crossed my mind. Yes. Um, number one, the first thing that crossed my mind was when you mentioned the, about Jesus, that they couldn't identify Jesus, not because he didn't have the character, but in terms of his dress. No, yeah. In terms of his look, mm -hmm. he blended. He blended. And that's something that struck me. Mm. That, and remember even when you go to arrest him too. Yeah, he blended. They couldn't. <laughs> they said, look, if we mix, come to your midst, yeah. we don't even know who is Jesus. We don't know who he is. Can you help us to identify him? Correct. That was where they needed Judas. To kiss him. And then they now gave him money, mm. and he was looking for money, and they said, look, okay, I will kiss him. Mm. Anyone I kiss yes. is Jesus. Mm. I mean, that's, that's profound, because this is a man who is the son of God, mm. and he was the one paying their salary. Boy, oh boy. He was the one taking care, I mean, all their bills, yeah. accommodation bills, yeah. their family bills. Yeah. He, they were right, all his, their bills were on him. Correct. And it, there was no difference between him and then, and then he blended. No special, no special troop around him. No, no, no. no, no, no he no, was he just, he blended. He probably wore the same thing. I, I said he blended. Yeah. They, they couldn't identify. They by, could identify. From the physical dimension, yeah. they could not yeah. identify Jesus. Yeah. He blended. That's, that's a food for thought. He was not looking richer and others looking poorer. Yeah. His color of his skin, the yeah. texture of his skin. Yeah. Which means they were eating the good food, yeah, the same they food. Were all eating they the were same just food. the same. <laughs> that is a food for thought for me. Hmm. Hmm. That's Much deep. is expected. Yes. Sir. That's a food for thought for me. Yes, sir. Number two. Then you, we mentioned something that when they were looking for Jesus, they couldn't even. These disciples were not up to the level yeah, that they could see Jesus in them. In say, them. Even to, say, to make the mistake, to say, you must be Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Each time they look at them, they, they all look alike. Yeah. 
But when they now began to come close to look at their character, character yeah. and they look at the way they talked, and the way they were, they say, oh, this one can't be Jesus. Oh, my goodness. That's they look at it, and say, this one can't be Jesus. Mm. And the same way, people may be looking at us too, yeah, and, they they say, look, and they can't see just they see are, Jesus. They are observing us. They, yeah. can't, they can't see the yeah. Christ-likeness. Yeah. We're under surveillance. They're observing us. So please take us to him. Yeah. To him. We know you are not the Jesus. Mm. Yes, we all look alike. Mm. Physically, you all look alike, but mm. there is something we are looking for. Mm. We can't see the glory. In you, yeah. We can't see the glory. Mm. Mm. We can't see the glory. There's mm. a glory they were looking for. They, looking they couldn't for. see the glory yeah. that will captivate them. Yeah, they couldn't see. In and as, you, as somebody is watching this moment, yeah. can they see the glory? Mm. That's a profound question. That thing that will captivate them to Jesus, yeah. can they see it in mm -hmm. us? In us. Hmm. Much is expected. We need to Truly. carry the glory. Truly. No Truly. wonder Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, Arise shine, shine, for your, your light, light is come. come. It's now time for them to see the, the glory. The Lord has risen upon you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now the third thing I picked quickly yeah. from when you were speaking about Cornelius. I mean... About Ethiopia and Hugh, the Ethiopian eunuch. This man was the, fan, let's say, finance minister, the yeah. treasurer of the country. Yep. Absolutely. And he could leave the country. The reason perhaps he could leave is that, and he was given the permission, is that they knew that there's no way they can stop him. Mm. They've seen the passion, passion. the fervency. Mm. The, 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 it's just like, 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 like Daniel. Daniel. Everybody mm. knew that Daniel cannot do without praying. Mm. Mm. They, knew. they knew. They said, the only way we can catch him Ooh. is through prayer mm. to his God. Look, you can't catch Daniel in sin, mm. but in prayer to his God, yeah. he will not compromise it. He will not compromise. So the same way with this, it took, you know, they said, look, this man, there's nothing to do except he wanted to resign mm. from the job. <laughs> He's going to Jerusalem to seek his God. Yeah. To oh. seek the living God of yeah. Israel. He, he's got to go. He's got to go. So they say, look, look, just make sure you sign all the checks. Mm. Go. And then that brings us to say that they need what he has. Otherwise, he would have been replaced. He would have been replaced. They need what he has. And he was just, he's yes. not corrupt. Yeah, yeah. They need what they, he has. He, he can keep the money. Yeah. He couldn't be replaced. Mm. Okay. But more than that, they could see that this man is hungry for God. Amen. See, you can't stop it. Now, the, the question as we want to pray mm. is that because we're going to pray now, can people say, we know you are hungry for God you're and they can't stop you? Mm. Can your husband say, look, I, I can't stop my wife. I can't stop my husband. Mm. I can't stop my son. He will when seek after God. God. Yeah. I want yeah. us to pray. Amen. Just Amen. let's talk to God and say, Father, Father let people see Jesus let in me. People see Jesus let them see the glory of God. Let them, let them see, the see let them know God. where I belong. Let them see the let passion in me. I don't need to talk Jesus about my passion. Let them see God. it all over me. Let they know that I'm hungry for God Lord. and I'm unstoppable. They cannot yes, afford to lose yes, me. Lord. They will let me go. Yes, Lord. Yes, you don't Lord. need to write too much letter Thank before they are published you because they know Thank you cannot be stopped. Oh, God. Let there be revival in my life. Let there be fire. Let there be light shining. On me. Much is expected. The world is looking for Jesus. Let us see this Jesus in my life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, please, Lord, please. Pray. We just pray Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Father God, we ask today, help us, O oh God, to be show peace of your glory, show peace of your power, show peace of your character, show peace of your presence. Make us a show peace of who you are to our world in the name of Jesus. Amen. We bless everyone watching us right now. We ask that the hand of God will come on you. We ask that the power of the Holy Spirit will fill you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for those who are not saved. As they open their hearts now, Lord, save their souls Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you open your heart, wherever you're watching, and you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save my soul, forgive my sins, write my name in the book of life. I pray God hear you right now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray for those who are hurting, physical, spiritual, oh, yes. emotional. 
We pray for healing for them right now. Encourage your children and help us to be like you. Help us to showcase your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. May men not look too far before they see Jesus. Mm, what a prayer. May they not look Amen. too far all Amen. over the place looking Amen. for Jesus Amen. when you are there. Amen. May they see Jesus Amen. in you. Thank Amen. you for being part of today's program. Please take this food for thought home and let's all reflect against next same, same time next week. Join us on Healing the Hurting, Fulfilling God's Purpose, Glorifying God. God bless you. Have a pleasant weekend and remain rapturable. God bless you. We love you. God bless you.